Hi, this is lecture 25. This lecture is going to look at internal partitions. So internal partitions are the main way that architects and designers define space within buildings. Partitions are usually simple framed or masonry elements, but the range of material employed is quite varied. You can build partitions out of quite a lot of different things. Partitions are different from external walls. They don't have to be insulated to the same degree, and they may or may not be load-bearing. So this lecture is going to look at the different types of partition you would find in a typical house. So partitions define the space within our houses and buildings. They're different from external walls. They don't have to protect us from weather. And we can categorise most partitions as either load-bearing or non-load-bearing. A non-load-bearing partition is usually built on the floor slab and can be removed without affecting the structural stability of the building. So if we take it away, it's only really the decoration around about the wall that we would need to deal with. A load-bearing partition, on the other hand, carries some of the loads of the building and might be employed to help take the weight of the floors at mid-span within the depth of the building. Taking a load-bearing partition away can result in collapse. Load-bearing partitions require a foundation below in order that the loads can be carried to the ground. Non-load-bearing partitions don't require that. And as we saw in previous lectures, there are documents that guide our construction of acoustic partitions, and in this document the example constructions and generic internal constructions, snappy title, we're going to look at how we might construct partitions to deal with acoustics. So there are three types listed within that document. Type 1 is timber or metal framing with two layers of gypsum board to either side. And the gypsum board has specific densities attached to it, so it's looking for a minimum mass per unit area of 10 kilograms per meter squared. And as we're installing that onto the framing, we would want to stagger the joints so that there wasn't any of the joints in the boards lining up. Type 2 is similar, we have timber or metal framing. But this time we've only got one board to the outside of each face, plus we have some insulation internally. So we still need to get the dense board, so it's got a minimum mass per unit area of 10 kilograms per meter squared. The mineral wool within the wall, a minimum depth of 25 millimeters would be required, and that needs to have a density of 10 kilograms per meter cubed. The third type of acoustic partition that we could build is a concrete block wall with plaster or gypsum board to either side. So this would be a solid wall with a minimum mass per unit area of 120 kilograms per meter squared. So key points to note about partitions is a load-bearing partition would carry some of the loads from the building and are useful for providing mid-span support within the depth of a building. Non-load-bearing partitions are primarily used for dividing space all partitions, whether load-bearing or not, should be constructed to reduce the passage of sound between rooms. And acoustic partitions can be framed with either two layers of dense plasterboard to either side, or can have a single layer with the addition of acoustic insulation. An acoustic partition can also be formed using solid, dense blockwork with a plaster finish to each face. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and if you've got any questions, as always, please let me know.